first day of Intel XT Masters Katowice. I'm here with Gambit Gaming's head coach, Leviathan. So, Leviathan, who are you outside of gaming? Uh, I'm just the sports and games guy, I guess. Everything I do is, you know, everything I've done has just been sports and games related. If I can't win at it, I don't care. If I can't compete, I don't care. So, it's like eSports is just perfect for me. How did you actually get into eSports? Um, I was in a Skype call with uh, some Challenger players I met at a LAN, uh, LAN Coover, out in Vancouver, and I uh, was just doing some uh, OGN, talk, watching and talking, and they said, oh, the things you're saying are actually pretty good, come watch us play. Um, worked with them, they liked it, used them as reference, jumped from team to team, uh, ended up here in Gambit. So you must have been pretty good at the game at the time. Uh, at the time I was silver. Uh, I, I had a good understanding of the game. Uh, no, I think I was gold. But <laughs> I had a good understanding of the game. Uh, I've been playing games my whole life. Sports, video games, like just everything. So I, even though maybe I couldn't do it, maybe I could see it. And they just liked it. So uh, yeah, it was only gold at the time. But coach skill level is often quoted as a way to discredit his work and what do you actually think about this topic how important is it to be is is it to be good at the game yourself uh, well for the coach it's not important at all you don't need a, a skilled coach uh, to be a coach you just need to have uh, per, uh, understanding of how to interact with people and understanding of game theory and how to implement game theory um, the actual aspects of the game you can use an analyst, highly recommended. You have someone, uh, I think we'll touch on later, uh, that understands the game very well. You work with them and then you also communicate with your players and you try to incorporate their ideas into the game plan. So it's not important at all to be good at the game to be a coach. But how do you get their authority then? Um, it's built through respect. Um, basically, you have to establish a foundation on a personal level, you know, understanding the person, allow them to get to know you, um, just who they are, uh, what they're about, what they like, and just relate with them on a personal level. And then if you're able to do that, when you get into the business side, um, they, they know you, so they respect you, uh, or at least they should. Uh, and uh, it's really just about building the, the personal foundation first. Uh, if you aren't able to do that, you won't be successful. Um, and, and I think, yeah, building the personal relationship is really important. Uh, most of the Western teams have both coaches and analysts right now. Some of them, like SK and Copenhagen Wolves, for instance, they use uh, psychologists. Could you define the roles that they fulfill? Yeah, so the analyst is the easiest one to define. It's someone who understands the game very well. Uh, they can look at a play. Um, find the root decision making behind the play, find the advantages and disadvantages, and then kind of uh, put together uh, information that when presented to the players is uh, usable for them. So uh, you, you would say things like, okay, well you want to take this tower, uh, here's an optimal way you can do it. Here are the things you want to do, here are things you want to avo avoid. Now that information should be passed on to the coach. Uh, the coach. Um, works in tandem with the players and the analysts to get an understanding of the, how the game should be played and how they want the game to be played. And then you kind of mediate discussions and uh, gather the information from each individual player to establish a game plan, find the balance, settle arguments, that sort of thing. And then the sports psychologist is there to deal with the hurdles that players can have mentally because once you make LCS or once you're at IEM, once you're a professional, you're going to come across the same problems that athletes do, uh, like tilting, uh, stage anxiety, um, focusing on uncontrollables like referees or you know uh, uh, opponents, and all those things are uh, can be helped through sports psychology. Uh, so like the analyst is there for game knowledge, the coach is there for implementing and mediating, and the sports psychologist is there to keep everyone mentally healthy. Uh, how important is the stat gathering for both uh, researching your stats, your opponent's stats, maybe having a look into solo queue? Um, well, statistics statistics are not the answer. Statistics help you confirm answers. Uh, basically, what I mean by that is if you look at someone and they are 100% win rate on uh, uh, Wukong, um, that doesn't mean uh, that they're the best Wukong player, that doesn't mean uh, Wukong is overpowered, um, but if you originally thought okay, uh, through other means, like maybe spectating or just uh, watching the game or just anything else, maybe that may lead you to believe that you know Wukong is strong in their hands, you would use statistics to check that against it. And same with like KDA and all that sort of thing. So you don't look at statistics and make decisions, you help use statistics to help you confirm your decisions. Well, 
you mentioned the roles that coaches, psychologists and analysts fulfill. Yeah. Could you define your own role right now? I have moderate game knowledge. Uh, when I'm playing and spamming games, I can reach you know master tier, low challenger. Um, right now, I'm only diamond five, uh, but I I understand lane swaps really well, and I understand uh, in-game communication really well, and uh, team play and and practice points and training. Uh, those are my strengths. Um, I lack in maybe management skills and. Uh, you know, maybe individual matchups, um, but for management, I have you know obviously the help of the people in Gambit, Groove, uh, Moo. Uh, just I have the help there, and then also the players. Uh, I rely on the players to help me with the tier lists and lane matchups. So um, maybe I think that you know Victor beats uh, Cassiopeia in lane, like whatever. I don't know if that's actually the case, um, but what matters is if my player can win the lane. So I'll speak to my player and say, Hey Betsy, how well, how good is the Victor Cassiopeia matchup? He'll say, Well, Victor wins, and then I'll go, Okay, so Victor wins. Then I'll use that information to formulate my game plans. There are lots of coaches in every region now. Now, but I think with the introduction of new roles to the LCS, teams had to, I don't know, look for people who might not necessarily have the knowledge or the competence to do it. But what I want to ask is, there are some coaches who have been credited, who have been spoken well about, like Coma, Nofe. Who would you like to highlight yourself as a coach? Maybe the one <clears throat> who do you look up to? Um, I draw my inspiration from sports uh, for a lot of things. Um, I look up to, like, okay, I like the movie Moneyball a lot. I actually draw a lot of my inspiration from that movie, like the Billy Bean uh, Oakland Athletics movie. And I also, I study a lot of uh, John Wooden, uh, NCAA basketball coach. And I try to, you know, listen to them. Uh, like understand their methods and their philosophies on life and try to find the parallels between those and League of Legends because even though I'm a coach, like I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of similarities between a basketball coach and a hockey coach, the same way there will be similarities from a basketball coach to a League of Legends coach. Uh, so I just try to inspire myself from people who like, John wouldn't spend his whole life coaching. And so I'm sure there's things that he learned uh, throughout his journey that if I that I would learn eventually, but if I borrow from him now, uh, it'll only advance me. So I, I, I draw a lot of my inspiration from the sports. Like, uh, oh, I forget. Why do I forget his name now? He's a Detroit Red Wings coach. Uh, anyways, uh, oh, I can't remember. But yeah, I listen to all of his interviews, uh, read everything that he, he puts out. Um, yeah, I'm blanking. This is really embarrassing. But anyways. Yeah. But then I'll proceed with the question. Um, and I'm blank as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Since you mentioned sports, a very common thing in, I guess, in all sports is to do drills like repetitive actions that polish My a certain ball. move. Sorry, I remember the name. Okay, continue. So, uh, is this approach transitioned into League of Legends or other esports game where you tell your your player you should go spend like an hour CSing or you should spend an hour jumping over this wall or whatever? Oh, so yeah. Uh, the best way to train is like through practice points um, because if if you just play with no intention of improving a specific aspect um, your training won't be as efficient as it could be but if you focus on I'm gonna last hit better this game and you play out the game and you focus only on last hitting and you do that for 10 20 games you're gonna train yourself to the point where you can take your focus off of I want to last hit better and put your focus into something else and your last hitting will remain at the skill uh, level that it uh, you when you were focusing on it so you you identify aspects of your game that are weak um, you train it and then you move on from it and I think that's like the most efficient way you can train uh, let's move on to talking about the changes to the LCS system uh, before we talk about coaching uh, the format of the LCS was changed like there are less games you get points to qualify what do you think about the new system new system sucks uh, I think it's fine. Uh, I don't like it because I think the season is way too long. Uh, I want to be the best team at all times, and if I'm the best team at all times, I'm working 11 months out of the year. Uh, and I think that's way too long. I think the season should be shorter, like maybe eight months or seven months max. I think playing best of ones is stupid because uh, you can just come out with a cheese and just completely throw the enemy off guard, and it makes a lower competitive league. I think best of threes would be a lot more enjoyable because, like, you look at the TSM's uh, CLG match, I think it was, uh, that was 
was like super hyped, and it was only one game. Like I was ready for a game two. I wanted the game three. Like I wanted to see those games keep going. Oh, but then we had to watch some other teams play. I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was a good match, but like we had to move on. And uh, I think the point system is good uh, that you can qualify through points. I think that the gauntlet is good. I think uh, the playoffs, how they're a week apart, is good. So there's like good things to it. Um, but. In my personal opinion, I want best of threes. I want a shorter season. Um, I'm glad they got rid of super week. Super weeks are dumb because you had, like in Europe, you okay, you play your week and then you take a day off and then you have two days to prepare for four games, and it's just like you can't do that. And so like super weeks were always just jumbled. So I think the changes are correct and that we needed changes. I just don't think these are the right ones in some aspects. But having said that, I think the biggest change was. Each team being obliged to get a head coach. Yeah. You're one of them. So how do you feel about it? Uh, it's nice that we get the riot money because then we can actually get real salaries. Um, not saying anything get paid well on Alliance, but I'm sure other teams couldn't afford uh, the salaries that they deserve. Um, I think some teams may have coaches that hurt the teams uh, because I don't think the every team is hiring the. Uh, correctly and when, the, when they're looking for a coach. Um, you shouldn't look for former players, those should be your analysts and uh, your your coach needs to have person skills and needs to have uh, uh, some understanding of the game theory. It doesn't need to completely understand the game. Uh, you can borrow that from your players. Um, but yeah, I think just the implementation of coaches is a step in the right direction because all sports have coaches and this is, even though it's eSport, there's still the word sport in there and uh, it just, it's going to allow the, it's going to allow the game to accelerate faster because people are getting better quicker and the game is just so much more competitive than what it was one, two, three years ago. That's probably part of the natural development, but yeah. Um, it's going to happen faster now, I feel. Mm -hmm. One of the changes is also how do you feel about being a public official representative of a team? Uh, it's fun. I like doing interviews. I love talking. I love the analyst desk. Uh, it's just it's uh, really enjoyable because I always wanted to be involved somewhat in sports. Like I always watch the Sports Center, and I always liked uh, watching the interviews and the coaches and the analyst desk. And so it's really like perfect, I guess. I also think that it. For me, for instance, like a casual viewer, it provides like more insight. What do you think about how do you approach the game or whatever? And like last but not least, coaches are allowed to participate in pick and ban phase. How important it is, do you think? Uh, I think it's very important uh, because it takes the responsibility off of the players um, that they have to succeed in pick and ban. Like I'm totally willing to take the blame. Like if anyone thinks that pick and bans are bad, just blame me. Don't look at the players uh, because I can take it. That's my responsibility. Um, the players now have the freedom of knowing that like, okay, we can just worry about the game. We play the game and then our coach will set us up with the right pick and bans. I always talk to them. I speak with them. They're always involved in the conversation. I'm not in a room by myself doing it. I'm in a room with them, asking them. They're contributing. Uh, but when it comes down to the stage, they know that they can just sit back. I ask them some questions. How does this matchup go? They say good and they say bad. Uh, and then we come to the conclusions during the draft. But it all falls on my shoulders. So they can just go out and play and then I'm the one that worries about the draft. Wow. The way you be became a head coach was by being recruited by Gambit and I think it's public knowledge that you've been working with them since uh, before IEM Cologne. So how did you end up with the team? Um, basically I messaged Edward after I spent some time in Brazil refining my skills. I identified some things that did po uh, poorly on Alliance uh, and I just said, hey, you know, you have a coach? I said, no. I uh, sat in on some scrims, gave them some practice points, gave them some tips, uh, helped them out with some, you know, just coaching things and uh, did that for about four weeks, managed to win IEM and then uh, had some contract talks for the next couple of weeks and managed to settle on an agreement and now I'm uh, coaching them for this split and the next one. Uh, as a coach, uh, when you work with European teams, both Gamut and Alliance, you were able to work both online and online, like you were at Gamescom with Alliance, you are on bootcamp with Gambit. Uh, is there a bit major difference between wor working remotely and in person? Uh, Gameplay-wise, no. You can train all the same things in person as in uh, online because it's not like I'm physically interacting with the players during the game. Uh, the only difference is it becomes on like the psychology and interaction side. I'm allowed. I am able 
to be more uh, involved in their personal lives, get an understanding of who they are, they get an understanding of who I am, so we can really build that personal relationship, which I think goes far. But um, remote analyst work, completely acceptable. Um, even remote coaching can be done if you have a manager that is involved in that personal side. Uh, so I think remote coaching and analyst work is okay. Obviously being in person is ideal because I think there's more benefits. Um, but it's not like if you're an, a remote coach, it, it's hopeless because I've proven that you can be successful just uh, on, on online. Uh, you moved into a gaming house about like one and a half months ago. Yeah. And what does your and theirs daily life look like? So I wake up in the morning uh, before everyone else. Uh, I go out and play some sports. Uh, they're going to be joining me soon, like I think like next week. Uh, and we go out and just get some exercise. Come back, everyone wakes up around 11, 12, sometimes 1. Uh, hop online, play some uh, solo queue games, maybe an ARAM, get warmed up. Play some scrims from about 3 o'clock to about 8, 9 or 10, depending on how many games we do. And then it's just solo queue for the rest of the night, get some food, uh, hang out, and then in bed around 2 a.m. and then get ready for the next day. Do you think that's the optimal way to train or is there anything you would like to incorporate as well? Yeah, no, there's things that we need to do better. Um, I think we need to wake up earlier. Um, see, I'm weak at management, so uh, this is something I can obviously improve on. I think we need to we need to eat better, we need to sleep uh, in a more reasonable schedule, we need to wake up earlier. Um, we need uh, more replay time, which again falls on me, because uh, we do watch replays. Um, we speak about every game after, so no, replay is not always needed, uh, but I feel like there's room for more replay in our system. So like our system right now isn't perfect, perfectly set up, but it hasn't been like my main priority to rearrange the players' lives. Uh, right? Like The first part of the season was more focused on fixing gameplay, uh, which I, don't, I realize in Alliance you can't change gameplay and lifestyles at the same time because it causes a clash uh, and like things get all messed up. So um, I think a lifestyle change is in the future, um, but as far as things have gone previously, we've been focused on training our game and, and not the lifestyle changes. Uh, right now you are Intel, <coughs> Intel Extreme Masters, and what I want to ask is uh, what's the difference between your approach towards practicing for a single, well, two best of one games in LCS and preparing for a tournament like that? So with LCS, you, you have to have a strong foundation of your own strategy with minor shifts depending on which team you face when, uh, because you must be solid throughout the season. Uh, you must consistently win and you can't drastically change things for your opponents. In a tournament where you can see the bracket and you have like a week to prepare, you know, well, we had a week but I guess if we had went to Worlds we'd have like a month. Um, you are able to train specifically for each team. We've gone into this tournament, we've looked at our potential opponents, and we have drafted up uh, specific game plans, champions, map movements that are specific to our opponents' weaknesses. Uh, and you can't do that in LCS. You have limited time to train for you know a few opponents. So um, yeah, basically, when you when you go into a tournament like this, you can have more linear strategies that are effective against only one team because you had enough time to train for all of them. Well, um, at this point, Gambit is on a rise. You lost only one game in the past eight matches. So, what do you make of this team? How far you can reach? Is it going to be like among the best teams in Europe? Does it have a chance against the international competition? Yeah, we have uh, we haven't hit our skill ceiling yet, and I have no idea where it is uh, because I've only spent time working on communication, uh, map movements, vision, uh, team cohesion. I haven't sat down with any of the players to work on any of their individual mistakes uh, or any of their you know, weaknesses in their game. Uh, and we just keep improving every day. So uh, I really have no idea how far we can go with this team. I, I honestly believe with how we're improving and the fact that I haven't seen it slow down yet, that Worlds is a legitimate shot, but I've been known as the delusional guy. Like I thought Alliance could win Worlds, so I, I, like you put any, you put me on any team, and I'll probably think we can win Worlds. So I don't know if my opinion is generally the best one to go off of. But yeah, I see this team is definitely capable of great things. Well, that's a good point to end, I guess. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, thank you to all the Gambit fans and supporters. Uh, I really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, love you guys, and uh, yeah, we're gonna try to keep being successful. Hold it down for you. Hold it down for Europe. And uh, yeah, we're just going to try to play our best to make you guys happy.